Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, August 21st, 2023. So, the summit is tomorrow, August 22nd, 2022. Uh, you know I'm talking about bricks. So I thought we would just get a little bit into the history and uh, what's going to be on the agenda. By the way, it's not going to develop a whole new world currency, not overnight, uh, that that's going to take a long time, but it's certainly going to be a topic of discussion. So let's just read a little bit. So, because there's a lot of these things I don't even know. So BRICS is a block of emerging world economies. I think we all know that's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And they wanted to uh, develop a trade and economic cooperation among the member nations. And that's all that BRICS originally was. So the acronym BRIC. Uh, this is kind of interesting, was originally coined by Goldman Sachs economist uh, Jim O'Neill in 2001. South Africa was added to the group in 2010 when the bloc extended its membership to another continent. Russia organized BRICS first meeting in 2006. So you can see this has been in the works for quite some time. You know, everybody thinks, well, BRICS just came about because of the Ukraine war or something. No, this has been around. But let's just continue. With foreign ministers from Brazil, Russia, India, and China in attendance, they discussed the economic bloc's shared interests and common challenges, the most prominent being the rising U.S. influence on uh, world order. According to World Bank statistics, BRICS accounts for more than 40% of the world's population, and a combined GDP is more than 23 trillion. That's trillion with a T. 26% uh, of the global economy. Now, that, that figure is more now. Uh, and that does not take into account the uh, the other nations that uh, have been invited to attend. Uh, so let's just keep going. BRICS will hold its 15th Heads of State Government Summit in Johannesburg, South Africa. And it goes uh, 22nd through the 24th. So it'll be going on. That's It'll be all over. The, well, it might not be all over the legacy media. <laughs> they probably won't even cover it. But it'll be all over YouTube and, uh, and uh, Rumble if you watch any of that. If you're watching this, obviously, on YouTube. So the world leaders expected to attend, uh, well, who cares? Uh, you know it's going to be, the only person that's not going to be there is uh, Putin. Uh, he's doing it via teleconference. And then, of course, uh, Lazarov, uh, which is probably uh, better than Putin to be there, because that is one smart dude. Um, so he'll be there uh, instead of Putin. Uh, so BRICS has also extended invitations to 67 world leaders across Africa. Latin America, Asia, and the Caribbean. So 20 dignitaries will attend the summit, including, and this was interesting, I didn't know this, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres. So the UN Secretary General is going to be there. That surprised me. Uh, the African Union Commissioner, um, Musaka Faki Mohamed, and the President of the BRICS New Development Bank. According to Reuters reports, prominent business leaders in the region are also expected in attendance. So what are the key issues? If they're not going to develop a whole new currency, what, what are they going to talk about? So this is according to Reuters. Other than developing economic relations and trade influence, one of the most pressing issues on the summit's agenda is BRICS expansion, with several nations from Asia, Africa, and Europe vying to join the bloc. While the group's stance on expansion is divided, China and Russia have embraced it, but India remains opposed, uh, that's, and that's what I've heard. Uh, when, I, when I say India is opposed, they're, they're more neutral on the whole thing. I, you know, I wouldn't say they're, they're vehemently to put, opposed. Uh, as many as 40 countries have reportedly shown interest in joining the bloc formally or informally. And let's listen to this list of names. That includes Algeria, Belarus, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Iran, Indonesia, Argentina, Ethiopia, and Egypt. So, another item on the bloc's agenda that has gained traction and attracted media headlines is the push from BRICS to conduct more cross-border trade in local currencies to reduce the group's reliance on the U.S. dollar. There you go, de-dollarization. Uh, several reports from the BRICS currency also emerged in the months preceding the summit, with some economic experts claiming that the economic bloc may in the future push, well, not may, they are, <laughs> pushing for de-dollarization. I don't know where these people write these articles. Uh, according to a Bloomberg report, South Africa's ambassador to the bloc, Anil Sukkel, 
SOK LAL said there are no plans to discuss replacing the U.S. dollar. So the over 40 countries, including Saudi Arabia, Iran, United Arabs, Argentina, Indonesia, Egypt, Ethiopia, um, let's see. China is seeking to expand its influence in its tussles with the United States over trade and geopolitics, uh, supports BRIC expansion, while Brazil, well, they're saying Brazil is skeptical. I, don't, I haven't heard anything about that. So let's, let's, oh yeah, and of course on the agenda, Russia is going to be discussing the Ukraine war. Uh, I'm sure that they are wanting uh, new people to uh, support their position on the war. So the BRICS Bank, this is interesting, I, you know, BRICS Bank, the group is also expected to discuss how to boost local currency fundraising and lending within the new development bank, or so-called BRICS Bank. Local currency use will be help de-risk the impact of foreign exchange fluctuation. The dollar has gained against emerging market currencies since Russia invaded Ukraine and the Federal Reserve began raising interest rates to fight inflation in early 2022, making dollar debt more costly for these countries to service. So this will be a major topic of discussion. While the NDB, which was established in 2015, see it's been around quite a few years, is still looking at the potential use of alternative currencies, there will be no talk about a common BRICS currency during the summit. The NDB is expanding and the summit could become a key platform to attract more member countries. The leaders are also likely to discuss how they can improve economic ties between their diverse economies. They're expected to engage in a series of discussions about trade and investment opportunities in sectors ranging from energy cooperation and infrastructure development to digital economy, economy and job development. And then, of course, the last one is Friends of the BRICS. The last day of the summit is expected to focus on talks with leaders of other countries. Invitations to, extend the, to, to attend the summit were extended to 67 leaders across Africa, Latin America, Asia, and the Caribbean. France has also expressed interest, but they told Macron to go shove it. That's not, <laughs> that's not what's in here. And of course, the United States won't be there. So in particular, attention will also be paid, be paid to the relationship between BRICS and African countries to tie with the summit theme BRICS in Africa. So that's it. In a nutshell, what BRICS is going to be all about. Uh, the first clip of the video, I wanted you to watch this because, uh, you know, one of the flaws of the West is that you got to take Putin. Putin means what he says and says what he means. And uh, this is a speech that Putin has given ahead of the BRICS summit. And uh, I, I was, I was watching this rhetoric, and I'm thinking, wow, this is this this is. So this kind of outlines the the Russian agenda. Putin makes a lot of valid points in this video. I'll let you be the judge of the video on your own. I'm not going to try to uh, analyze it. Let's watch that video. переступить через все для сохранения той неоколониальной системы, которая позволяет ему паразитировать, по сути, грабить мир за счет власти доллара и технологического диктата. Собирать с человечества настоящую дань, извлекать основной источник незаработанного благополучия, ренту гегемона. Сохранение этой ренты их ключевой, подлинный и абсолютно корыстный мотив. Вот почему их интересам отвечает тотальная десуверенизация. Отсюда их агрессия к независимым государствам, к традиционным ценностям и к самобытным культурам, попытки подорвать неподконтрольные им интернациональные и интеграционные процессы, новые мировые валюты и центры технологического развития. Им критически важно, чтобы все страны сдали свой суверенитет в пользу Соединенных Штатов. Правящие верхушки, одни государства, добровольно соглашаются это сделать, добровольно соглашаются стать вассалами. Другие их подкупают, запугивают, а если не получается, разрушают целые государства, оставляя после себя гуманитарные катастрофы, бедствия, руины, миллионы загубленных и скореженных человеческих судеб, террористические анклавы, зоны социального бедствия, протектораты, колонии и полуколонии. Да им все равно, лишь бы получать свою выгоду. Хочу еще раз подчеркнуть, именно в алчности, в намерении сохранить свою ничем не ограниченную власть и есть подлинные причины той гибридной войны, которую коллективный Запад ведет против России. 
Они желают нам не свободы, а хотят видеть нас в колонии. Хотят не равноправного сотрудничества, а грабежа. Хотят видеть нас не свободным обществом, а толпой бездушных рабов. Для них прямая угроза – наша мысль и философия. Поэтому и покушаются наших философов. Наша культура для них представляет опасность искусства, поэтому пытаются ее запретить. Наше развитие и процветание тоже для них угрозы. Конкуренция разница. Им вообще не нужна Россия. Она нужна нам. So, moving on from BRICS, uh, the second clip of the video, you know, one of the things that we really, or I haven't given much thought to, is, is what happens after the war in Ukraine. You know, I haven't given it much thought. If we don't all die from global thermonuclear war, we have to start thinking about uh, what's going to happen. Now, one thing that is happening right now is that a lot of the weapons that the West is providing to Ukraine is ending up on the world market. Uh, a lot of terrorists are getting their hands on weapons, uh, and Africa is worried about that these weapons are going to destabilize Africa. If it gets into the hands of Boko Raton, for example, or some of these terrorist groups, especially uh, Libya. Libya is completely destabilized with warlords warring on each other right now after Hillary Clinton uh, blew it up. So uh, you can see Africa's uh, got a lot of concerns about the aftermath of the war, and they're worried about even more weapons uh, flooding onto the world market. Because, uh, uh, you, you know, Ukraine, uh, a lot of those weapons didn't make it to the front lines. <laughs> let's just put it that way. So let's watch uh, this African leader talk about his concern for, for the weapons. Telle que les armes sont déversées, c'est ce que nous avons dit. Nous, nous avons pris le courage de dire qu'au Burkina, nous formons des volontaires pour la défense de la patrie du volontariat. Nous avons suivi les images en Ukraine où les gens étaient forcés de rester pour faire la guerre. Il est sûr que l'armée qui est déversée dans un pays comme l'Ukraine en guerre, c'est sûr que tout ne sera pas utilisé. On espère que la guerre finira le plus tôt possible. Et qu'est-ce qui va se passer après Comment ce matériel sera récupéré Puisque les gens ont été forcés de gré à aller en guerre. Est-ce que c'est prévu comme un plan d'aider là-dessus. Nous ne voyons pas ça. Actuellement, les gens pensent plus à la reconstruction. Qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire pour engranger beaucoup plus de marchés Mais les armes qui ont été versées, les personnes qui ont donné les armes, là, on fera quoi de ces personnes On n'en parle pas. Et ça, c'est le truc qu'il faut voir. Les gens sont plus intéressés à savoir quels sont les contrats qui pourraient être passés pour reconstruire l'Ukraine. Et c'est ce qu'on a dit. En, en Libye, c'est parti très facilement. Mais les services après vente de cette guerre sur notre sol africain, c'est ça qui n'a pas été réglé. Nous espérons que dans le cadre du partenaire, on tous les moyens seront mis en œuvre pour quand même arriver à tracer et à suivre ces armes-là qui sont déversées en Ukraine. Pour que ça ne vienne pas dans nos pays, en tant que ça ne vienne pas dans les pays africains encore. Nous croyons que tous les tests possibles seront faits là-bas et que ça s'arrête là-bas. Que les gens puissent récupérer les armes qui ont été déversées et commencer à les détruire au fur et à mesure. Ça, c'est la meilleure idée. Et ça devrait être une des idées, une des, un des plans d'action futur de l'ONU et de toutes les organisations, et surtout de l'ONU. Wasn't that interesting? So, the last clip of the video, uh, you don't have to watch this. Uh, it's, but I, I thought this was very interesting because this is uh, some captured Ukrainian uh, prisoners of war. And uh, the, the first one, the, I, I'm, gonna let, I, I'm gonna cut the video after the first person gives his name and rank, but look how old the first guy is, and he's a private? That tells you they're dragging, they're, I mean, and, it, and then look at the other prisoners, even though I'm gonna cut out, you know, when they give their date of birth and everything, because I don't think you need to see that, but look at the shape these guys are in. They're skinny, they're out of shape, they're old, I mean, this is what's fighting Russia on the front lines. Yeah, anyway, that's why I wanted to include this video. And then, of course, the, at the end of the of the video, uh, he has a message to Ukraine and says, "You know, look, you know, we we can you can quit fighting, and uh, you know, we'll treat you well." well whether that's true or not, I, I can't say. I'm not over there, but. Палейко, уважаемые друзья, вот сегодня 18 августа. 
2023 года. Вот у нас получается пленные бойцы украинских формирований, именно штурмовики, которые были взяты в плен 13 числа, но в силу разных обстоятельств их пока, как говорится, мы не показывали нигде. Хочу отметить с особой благодарностью бойцов 346-го 346 бригады специального назначения. Реально бойцы-красавцы. Вот работа, которая была сделана в зоне ответственности, значит, непосредственно 346-й бригады специального назначения, 4-й бригады 2-го армейского корпуса и спецназа «Ахмат». Получается, вот результаты этой работы 13 числа стали вот как раз вот бойцы непосредственно штурмовых подразделений ВСУ. Так, давайте, представьтесь. Благин Юрий Анатольевич, рядовой 92-й механизированной бригады. Откуда родом? Днепропетровская область, Никополь. Число, месяц, год рождения. 8 ноль 7 88 -го года рождения. Ефрейтор Криволопчук Виктор Владимирович. 11.05.92 года рождения. Житомирская область. Проживаю в Киеве. 756 полк. Так вот, для тех, кто видит этих товарищей. Вот это штурмовики. Это все штурмовики. Вот как вы можете видеть, они все живы, здоровы. Значит, вот Попав в плен, они получили путевку в жизнь. Значит, для тех людей, которые говорят, что тут прям такой серьезный контрнаступ идет со стороны украинских формирований, что они взяли какие-то позиции, что они там взяли Клещеевку, Андреевку, Курдюмовку. Вот, чтобы все могли услышать, вот эти все бойцы, они взяты в плен в районе Клещеевки. Значит, если бы Клещеевка была под контролем украинских формирований. Как вы думаете, они были бы у нас в плену? Нет. Вот я хочу всем сказать, кто находится на той стороне. Мужики, если вы имеете хотя бы какие-то мозги, вы поймете, что вам не нужно уже воевать. Вам нужно принимать решение сдаваться и оказываться с нами в одном строю. Вы не должны воевать за интересы американского правительства или, я не знаю, бизнесменов американских, для того, чтобы их делать богатыми. Для этого умирать украинскому народу не нужно. Не делайте такого, чтобы ваши дети оставались сиротами. Ваши дети заслуживают того, чтобы их отцы растили их, приводили их в школы, в садики, и чтобы они вас выдавали замуж, женили чтобы ваши отцы были с вами рядом до конца ваших дней. Вот по сути своей, подаваясь, поддаваясь непосредственно политике, которая сегодня развернута на Украине, идя за предателем вашего государства Зеленским и в угоду Америке и ее приспешникам, вы губите просто так мужскую часть своего населения. Anyway, For the video. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar. That Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, sooner or later God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later God's gonna cut you down.